If you were to set out on an adventure, like those in the Fellowship of the Ring, or characters on a D&D campaign, or like the Dovahkin from Skyrim, what type of armor would you choose to wear on that adventure? Now for this question, we shall be focusing on body armor. Not on other types of armor, like helms. Or on shields, though shields would be a great choice. First, you must understand what you need your armor to do. Now, you might be asking, well, I need to protect myself. Yes, yes, and yes. Protection is the primary purpose of armor. But there are many more things you will need from your armor than just protection. Yes, you will need it to protect you from roving beasts like lions, wolves, and bears. And also from monsters like goblins and trolls and from monstrous people like bandits, brigands, and the minions of your many evil and nefarious fiends. But your adventures shall also take you over long distances. You will have to climb mountains, crawl through caves, trudge through swamps and walk through forests, maybe cross a desert or a frozen tundra or two. So you will need an armor that is comfortable, something you can wear in all these environments, and move in, something that won't wear you down or make it hard to move, something that won't overheat you, and something that you can easily put on and take off yourself. As this adventure will not be short, it will require many days of travel most likely, as we know all great adventures do. Your armor must also be practical. You will need to eat in your armor, you will need to walk and run in your armor, climb and crawl, you will need to hunt, gather food, sit, and maybe even lay down and sleep in your armor. All these things you might need to do in your armor, and you will need to be prepared, because you never know when a roving beast or monstrous monstrosity might jump out and attack you. Along with this, as you might be away from any towns for a long time, or at least any towns or villages that have sufficient supplies to repair your armor, you will need to maintain and repair your armor yourself. So you will require an armor that you can do that yourself, or at least with the few companions you might have with you on your trip. As you know, many adventurers go with at least one or two, or maybe five companions. So to recap these, you will need protection, comfort, practicality, and ease of maintenance. Now, let's see how different types of armor do in these categories. Plate armor would be best when it comes to protection. Wolves would not be able to get through it with their claws and teeth. Bears would struggle. I'm sure one could cut down a bear with a sword or spear before it could break through. The only beast I think that might puncture it would be crocodiles in their sort. But you should be able to avoid such beasts like those, or cut them down with your blades. Monsters you should be able to resist in your in steel plate. And definitely bandits and brigands in your as plate was designed for war. But as it is designed for war, it is not the most practical gear outside of battle. Historically, soldiers did not often travel on long marches wearing their full set of plate. Often they just wore their gambeson on the march, as it was much more comfortable. Plate, even though one can move easily in plate, is still tiring to wear for prolonged periods. It is at least 50 pounds of steel and padding, not something that someone would want to wear for prolonged periods of time. It also gets hot in plate. Also, fulfilling your 
everyday tasks would be much more difficult in play. Gauntlets would make it difficult to do things that require small movements of your hand, like untying things or unlatching things. Crawling would be more difficult in play. The exhaustion that one would get from wearing it for a long period of time would make other things more difficult. And if it is necessary to occasionally sleep in your armor, one would greatly struggle to do that in plate. Also, if one's alone only has few or or has few companions, plate would be a great disadvantage to put on and take off, as plate to put on and take off quickly requires assistance. Just see videos from Knight Errant. He has many videos of getting plate on and taking it off. So plate, despite its great protective value, would not be that practical. Along with these disadvantages I've already mentioned, if one takes it off, one must store it and carry it with them. One might be to stick some parts within the breastplate and backplate, but even that, it would require as much area as one's torso to transport. And that would be a whole backpack, removing the area you would have for food and water and other necessary supplies like maps, scrolls, rope, and potions, all things that an adventurer would need. If one had a horse, one could have their horse carry their gear and their plate. That would take up all the saddlebags of the horse just to carry the plate. So plate would not be a great choice for you, adventurer. But there are many other good choices. As I mentioned, troops during the Middle Ages went on march wearing their gambesons. And a thick gambeson, something like this, though maybe stronger than this, could provide great protection from cuts, thrusts, and slashes. Though it is not perfect and not as great as steel armor, or other metal armors, but it still is good protection. It is comfortable to wear for prolonged periods. It is like a heavy coat. Though like a heavy coat, one can get heat exhaustion wearing it. As anyone who does HEMA knows well, wearing a gambeson while doing heavy aerobic activity is rather exhausting, and it gets rather warm inside. But any armor would lead to greater exhaustion than not wearing armor. So that's not too great of a disadvantage. Unless one is traveling through a desert, then you might want something thinner than a heavy gambeson. As like if one was wearing a heavy coat, one could do all their day-to-day -day tasks wearing a gambeson. One could even sleep in their gambeson. And that could provide protection from cold nights as well. And that way you can be ready for defense. If one needs to repair their gambeson from damage, one could easily overlap the material again and sew it back up. Or if the rip or tear or cut is too large, one could add excess material from cloth they could carry with them. So overall, a gambeson would be a great choice, but there are other choices along with that. One could wear a male shirt over their gambeson, or wear a scale or lamla armor with a thinner gambeson behind it. Any one of these could be a good choice. Mail would be great protection, though depending on how tightly linked the rings are, there could be gaps that thin claws or blades might be able to use to break through, which could be a danger to you, ad adventurer. But still, it could be a great choice, but it would be an added 20 pounds of gear to wear mail. Now with scale and lamellar, as scales and lames overlap and are thick and rigid, they provide some extra shock protection, so it require less of a gambeson underneath. Simply one could wear something like an arming doublet that is used in the plate instead of a full gambeson, and would have sufficient enough padded protection underneath. Those are also rather comfortable and easy to move in. Still more rigid than male, but not too much more. So one could perform their daily tasks in it, in such armor, 
and one could repair them as one could carry spare scales or lambs with them, and the cord needed to attach them together, and easily repair it in camp or on the move. Overall, a great choice. Also, scale and laminar armor does not have to be made of steel. One could make it out of bronze, which would require less maintenance, as bronze, when it corrodes, retains its strength unlike steel which rusts into dust. So you would not need to oil it constantly. But these armors can be made out of things other than metal. One can make such armor out of thick boiled or hardened or laminated leather, or out of horn, or scales, or carapace. Any one of these could be a good choice for you an adventurer as these are materials that one might gather on their adventure. Leather would be easier to work, and with the abundance of fierce beasts and monsters that one might face, you have plenty of thick, hard hide. Even some of those beasts' hide could be extra tough, tougher than any leather you could get from your common cow. Think of the toughness of the hides of trolls. That could be great material to make armor out of if one knows how to treat it properly and harden it properly. Also, with such beasts that one might face as an adventure in a fantasy land, they have heavy scales, such things as dragons or other skelly beasts like that. Those scales could work as armor as well, though they would require more tooling to prepare. Any one of these could be a great choice, and such armors like those, may I think as a metal, would not require as much maintenance. So great choices for your armor. Any one of these, either just a gambeson or mail over your gambeson, or a scale lamella armor can be a great choice. Interesting idea is if you were to choose for added protection, a scale lamella armor, is to make it out of bronze, as it require less maintenance. Or, one can make it out of a thick, hardened leather or horn, as one would be able to repair it from what they can find in their travels. But it would depend on how much protection you would need, and how much maintenance you think you would have to do on your armor. So it's all up to you, adventure. Which armor do you choose to wear on your adventure? For other insights into this, you can see a video from Shad of Shadiversity who talked about the same subject. Though he differs from me on some points, 